Chapter 10 He found himself in the neighbourhood of the asteroids 325, 326, 327, 328, 329 and 330. So he started by visiting them to look for an occupation and to add to his knowledge. The first one was inhabited by a king. Clad in purple and ermine, he was seated on a throne, both simple and majestic. Ah, here comes a subject, exclaimed the king when he spied the little prince. And the little prince wondered to himself, how can he recognise me? since he has never seen me before. He did not know that for kings the world is greatly simplified. To them, all men are subjects. Come a little closer so that I may see you better, said the king, inordinately proud of having someone to be king over at last. The little prince looked around to find a place to sit down. But the entire planet was covered by the magnificent ermine robe. So he remained standing and since he was tired, he yawned. It is contrary to etiquette to yawn in the presence of a king, said the monarch. I forbid it. I cannot help it, replied the little prince. In confusion, I have come on a long journey and I haven't slept at all. In which case, said the king, I order you to yawn. I have not seen anybody yawning for years. Yawns are a curiosity to me. Come on, yawn again. It is an order. You are frightening me. I cannot yawn any more, said the little prince, blushing. Hmm, hmm, replied the king. Then I order you sometimes to yawn and sometimes to... He spluttered a bit and seemed vexed. For the king attached considerable importance to his authority being respected. He tolerated no disobedience. He was an absolute monarch, but as he was very kind, he gave reasonable orders. If I ordered a general, he would say, if I ordered a general to change himself into a seabird, and if the general did not obey, it wouldn't be the general's fault. It would be my fault for ordering him to do the impossible. May I sit down? asked the little prince shyly. I order you to sit down, replied the king majestically, gathering a fold of his ermine robe around him. But the little prince was puzzled. The planet was tiny. Over what could this king really rule? Sire, he began, Please excuse me my asking you a question. I order you to put your question to me, the king was quick to reply. Sire, over what do you rule? Over everything, replied the king very simply. Over everything? The king made a sweeping gesture, taking in his own planet, the other planet's, and the stars. Over all that, said the little prince. Over all that, replied the king, for he was not only an absolute monarch, but a universal one. And the stars obey? Of course, said the king. They obey immediately. I do not tolerate insubordination. The little prince marvelled at such power. Had he possessed it, he could have watched not 44, but 72, or even 100 or 200 sunsets in one 
and the same day without ever having to move his chair. And as he was feeling rather sad, remembering his small abandoned planet, he plucked up the courage to ask the king a favour. I should like to see a sunset. Please do me that kindness. Order the sun to set. If I were to order a general to fly from one flower to another like a butterfly or to ride to tragedy or to change himself into a seabird and if the general did not carry out the order, which one of us would be at fault? It would be you, said the little prince firmly. Exactly. One must demand of each and every one what he or she is capable of. Authority is first and foremost based on reason. If you order your people to throw themselves into the sea, you will have a revolution on your hands. I have the right to demand obedience because my orders are reasonable ones. What about the, my sunset? The little prince reminded him, for he never forgot a question once he had asked it. You shall have your sunset. I shall demand it. But in accordance with scientific government, I shall wait until conditions are favourable. And when will that be? Asked the little prince. Hmm, hmm, replied the king, consulting his big calendar. Hmm, hmm, it will be around... Around, it will be this evening about twenty minutes to eight, and you shall see how well I am obeyed. The little prince yawned. He regretted having to miss the sunset, but he was becoming a little bored. I have nothing more to do here, he said to the king, so I'll be on my way. Don't leave, said the king, who was too proud of having a subject. I'll make you a minister. A minister of what? Of, of justice. But there is nobody here to judge. We do not know that, said the king. I haven't yet made a complete tour of my kingdom. I... I am very old, and walking makes me very tired. But there is no room here for a carriage. Oh, but I have already looked, said the little prince, bending down to give one more glance to the other side of the planet, just to be sure. Then you shall judge yourself, answered the king. That is the most difficult thing of all. It is far more difficult to judge oneself than to judge others. If you succeed in judging yourself rightly, then indeed you are very wise. As far as I am concerned, said the little prince, I can judge myself anywhere. I do not have to live here. Hmm. Hmm said the king. I believe that somewhere on my planet there is an old rat. I can hear him at night. You can judge that old rat. You will condemn him to death from time to time. Thus his life will depend upon your justice. But on each occasion you will spare him so as to keep him alive. He is the only one we have. I, replied the little prince, do not like to condemn anything to death, and I think I'll be on my way. No, said the king. The little prince, having completed his preparations, had no wish to hurt the feelings of the old monarch. If your majesty wishes to be promptly obeyed, you should give me a reasonable order. 
You could, for example, order me to be gone in less than a minute. It seems to me that conditions are favourable. As the king said nothing, the little prince hesitated a moment and then, with a sigh, took his leave. I make you my ambassador, the king called after him in haste. He had a magnificent air of authority. Grown-ups are very strange, said the little prince to himself, continuing on his journey.